Proverbs chapter number 23 tonight in your Bible. Appreciate that song. <clears throat> A lot of great truth there. Proverbs chapter number 23. Now, for the last three weeks, we've been talking about being filled and controlled and guided and directed by the person of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, I, I want to talk about why that's needed. Why is this necessary? <clears throat> and I think you're going to understand, no doubt, what I'm trying to lay out, but you may see this in a different view that you have a deeper and a greater appreciation of God giving us the opportunity as Christians to be filled with His Spirit day by day and to be guided and directed through this light by Him. To be guided and directed through this life by God is a victorious life. That's what we all want. We want to live a victorious life. And of course, that is the type of life that Christ imparts to his people. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee but his heart is not with thee. Talking and stating something with the verbal does not give the full intention of what's behind the heart. But one thing that we do know 
apart from verbal speech, is as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why is it necessary for us to take heed to New, scripture, the New Testament Scripture teaching about quench not the Spirit, or grieve not the Spirit, or walk in the Spirit? Why is this so important to us? I think that raises a very legitimate question, and I think the question ought to be answered. Now, as we understand, I want you to think about this one more time, as you think in your heart, so will you be. As you think in your heart, the things that you ponder upon, what influences your motives is going to get a product and you're going to be the product. You're going to be the product of what you think. Now, to know that is, is good because by nature as a product, we're not wanting up front the result that comes from our first nature. You just don't know that. For, for instance, let me say this, to be carnally minded is, is death. You don't want death, but it's very natural for you to be carnally um, controlled or carnal in your nature. But you don't want death, and it's because it's natural to us. It's, it's a natural thing to us. Now, as people, we are all used to being controlled. You're, you're, you're very controlled. You're very controlled by five things. You're very controlled by what you see. You're controlled by what you smell, what you hear, what you taste, and what you touch. That is what controls the average human being living right now. This is what's controlled you. The natural man, he lives and he motivates himself by his natural senses. His given instincts. Now, we would say that the person who's not saved is carnal. That word carnal doesn't have the idea to minimize them. We're not minimizing them. That's not what we're doing. But we're, we are, watch this, we are revealing a very true statement of character. That's a carnal character. Why, why are you saying it's a carnal character? Because it's a character that's made up of five things. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, and what you touch. That's a carnal character. This is all very normal to us. This is how we are raised. This is how we function in society. Now there are certain people give, give more energy to certain parts. Some people are very caught up with the looking. And boy, the looking really gets them. And some people aren't. And some people are very caught up into the touching. And some people aren't. And some people are very caught up in the tasting. So, uh, in, the, in the natural sense of a human being, every man and every woman by nature is controlled by a carnal nature. But, but let me get a little bit more in depth with that. Five things. The touching, the tasting, the seeing, the hearing, and the smelling. These are all things that are made up in our existence as a human being and we are grown up in a world where we exercise these five senses every day. Every day we exercise these. Every day. It's, it's so natural to us that you don't even know you do it unless I teach you about this. That's how natural it is. Now, when we get saved and born again, watch. You know this. We get a new nature. A new nature? Well, yeah. We have to have a new nature if we're going to be controlled by something other than what we see, what we taste, what we touch, what we smell, and what we hear. We've got to have a new nature. So being regenerated and born again is perfect sense. So to come over here to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded we are told is life and peace. 
But this life over here, it's not a light that goes by what it sees. It's not a light that goes by what it touches. It's not a light that goes by what it smells. Now, I'm just talking with influence. Now, yes, we live in a, I mean, <laughs> you don't want a dead possum in your back seat and say, oh, it don't bother me. <laughs> it's been back here for a couple weeks. It don't bother me. You bothered with that? Roll the window down a little bit. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the influence that would control the whole. So over here, we're told, we're told that that carnal living or that carnal life, mind you, which has got five senses, we're told that that carnal living, that carnal life, is not good. We're told that that's not right. We're told that in that carnal living is no good thing. Matter of fact, we're told ahead of time that that carnal living is so bad that it'll take a man or a woman to eternal hell. That's how bad that one is over there. That's what this will do. That's what this will do. This will do it. This will do it. And so will this. These are little members, but they have a lot of control. Amen. So when we get saved, he says, make no provision for the flesh. Them five things. Now you may not understand that the way you need to understand that. Because sometimes we don't understand what sense really influences us. We don't understand what makes us the product we are. We don't understand what makes us the man or the woman we are from the natural setting of what we used to be before we got saved. But I can promise you there is something there that makes you. Some people are very caught up into smelling. A chef, for instance, he likes that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying just a chef. But let me, when, I, when we think about this, why Christians need to be controlled by the Holy Ghost? Christians, is because if we're not controlled by the Holy Ghost, then guess what's controlling us? Over here. It's going to be one of these five senses. By the way, which is normal to you. It doesn't seem odd to go back this avenue. This doesn't seem like a whole new agenda of life. When you go back to your feeling life, or your looking life, or your hearing life, or your touching life, or your you, this is not foreign to you. You've been in that life for 10 years. Is it maybe you're 12 years old? Or maybe you've been in this life for 40 years. Maybe you've been in this life, you're 60 years old. So this is not real unforeign territory. Matter of fact, it's quite normal. And so sometimes we know that this isn't what we need. That's what we need. And then we get over there and we struggle with that because of them five senses. We struggle over here because of what we see and not knowing that what we're seeing is not good for us. We've not learned that from the previous life because it's natural. Or what we're, what we're listening to and such. So we, when we get saved, these five senses, they, they try to still compete with the Holy Spirit in controlling your life. And to you, this is very normal because this is how you've been brought up. This is how you've lived. Now, so the question is very legitimate. Why Christians need to be controlled by the Holy Ghost? Um, as a man thinketh in his heart. How, how, how do I think of my heart? By natural birth? That way right there. That's why I am what I am. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This man over here is what he is because as he was grown up, he gave emphasis on one of the senses that God has given him for, for different reasons. But he's given overemphasis on one, maybe less emphasis on another. I don't know. Uh, only the individual knows that. But as this kind of arises up, but we understand as people in general, as general, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let's just put Christianity aside for a moment. Let's put Christ aside. I got to have you get in this point. Christ is aside. All you know is to function on what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, and what you touch. And that's what you are. That's what you are. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's what you become. And once again, when you get saved, you identify with a new nature. Okay. Jesus said this in John 6, 63. 
I want you to listen to what he said. I want you to understand why he said this. And I just would prefer you listen and, and, and catch the words. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It's for the Christian. Now, by the way, let's our, we already talked about this. But as a Christian, we do know we have a dual nature, right? We have an old nature and a new nature. Everybody with me on this? I, I know you all know this. But I, okay, for the sake of maybe somebody that's maybe not knowing that. Okay, so this perspective of John 6, 63 is coming from this view. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The word quickeneth means giveth life. It is the spirit that gives life. And, and now, by the way, that life, Jesus says this. I've come that you might have life. That you might have it more abundantly. That's what the Spirit gives us. We know that the life filled with the Spirit of God gives us conquering ability. We know that a life that's filled with the Spirit of God, we are all victorious. We know a life that's filled with the Spirit of God is the life to live. Now watch. It is a spirit that quickeneth, giveth life. The flesh, and when he's saying the flesh, touching, tasting, looking, smelling, hearing. The flesh, or your old nature, or your old you, the flesh profiteth nothing. So as a Christian, I've got to always be mindful that if I choose to slide back over here and be controlled, by one of my natural senses, which once again, this is very normal for us. I am right now accomplishing nothing. Nothing. And I gotta tell myself that and remind myself that because I tell you who ain't gonna tell me that? My eye. My ear's not gonna say, I got some news for you. My ear's gonna say, you like that, don't you? My hand's gonna say, pop, 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 wake up. No, my hand's going to say, good. My hand ain't going to tell me that. My nose ain't going to tell me that. The word of God has got to tell me that. And I got to believe that. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Now watch this. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Before we're saved, and it's possible to be a carnal Christian and slide back over here. We're controlled by, once again, what we see, what we smell, what we taste, what we hear, and what we feel. Once we're saved, though, we don't live like that at all. We live by the Word of God. The words that I speak are spirit and life. Now my life is to be directed by the Word of God, which only the Holy Spirit can influence me in. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can influence me in that. Okay? It is a spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So as an individual with a dual nature, what do I want? Do I want spirit and life? Do I, do I want that? Or do I want nothing? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, he's going to be. There's no avoiding that. If he wants to come over here, He's going to be a product for God's honor and glory. If he wants to hang out over here, he's going to be a product that's not going to bring God honor and glory. Now, the Bible teaches us, and for instance, in 2 Peter, when he wrote his second letter, chapter number 1, in verse, no, no, yeah, chapter number 1 of 2 Peter, let me quote to you verse 1, 2, and 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained like precious faith with us. So watch this. Who's he talking to? He's talking to a group of people who are not being guided and directed by what they see, what they smell, what they taste, what they touch, and what they hear. That is not the kind of audience he's addressing. He's addressing an audience, he says that has, like him, obtained precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So he's talking to some people over here who aren't being controlled like that. They're being controlled by the Spirit of God because it is the Spirit of God that reveals the things of faith, and it's the Spirit of God that reveals the salvation of God and the Word and such. Now, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
or Jesus our Lord. Now watch. According as his divine power hath given unto us, now that's the word, the word of God, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So here, we are told as Christians that the Bible contains and gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness. So if the Bible gives me all things, li listen to it again. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. And that means all things. Nothing's left out. All things that pertain to life and godliness. If the Bible gives me all things that pertain to life and godliness, then I need to make up my mind. I do not need to live by what I see. I do not need to live by what I hear, what I taste, what I touch, or what I smell. Because the Bible tells me that everything I need to live with, with whether it's in my spiritual life or my physical life, the Bible tells me how to do that. Not what I think in my natural ability. And this is where people get mess, messed up at in the faith. And this is what starts movements that aren't biblical. They're close to being biblical and they got a, 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 a scent of Christ upon them, but they're not biblical. They're, they're not biblical to the full extent. Hey, what about this thought? What about the Bible telling us this? And this is a really good thought for this particular occasion. Now listen carefully to this uh, great truth that we are all very familiar with that Paul labored upon when he was laboring towards and for the church there in Rome. Here, he says in verse two of chapter 12, listen, and be not conformed to this world. Now watch, but be, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What? Yeah, you, 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 can't, you can't think like this over here. You're going to think like that over there. You're going to become something that Christ has not got plans for. Your mind needs renewed. Because you grow up, we grow up in a culture to where we function once again by what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, and what we smell. That is how we naturally function. As an individual, this is a very normal, common life to us. But once we're saved, we're told to leave that off. We're told not to mind that. We don't, we're told not to pay attention to that. We're told not to give in to that. We're told to put off that old nature, okay? We're to, then, then how do I live? I mean, how am I, how, how am I supposed to make it? The Word of God teaches us that. The Word of God teaches our new life how to live. And just as you're, per, you're grown up, and you, you're grown up exercising these five senses over here, just as that is normal in Christianity, it's just as normal as once you get saved to let the Spirit of God lead you, guide you, and direct you, and let the Spirit of God and the Word of God feed you and, and motivate your life. Now, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why does my mind need to renewed here? Well, according to this text, if I don't get my mind renewed, I cannot prove the perfect will of God. And I definitely can't prove the perfect will of God by looking at things, seeing, uh, basing my life as a Christian on what I see. I can't do that. I can't base my Christian life on what I hear. I can't do that at all. Not, not in a strict sense. So what I'm getting at is we need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. As a Christian, that is the work of the Spirit of God. That is the work of the Spirit of God controlling you. That is the work of the Holy Ghost motivating you and leading and guiding and directing your life. Now, let me say this. As we go out and we witness to people and they say, I'm not interested in Christ. I'm not interested in church. You know, I appreciate you offering and coming out here, but I'm not interested in that. Now, why would that be? We walk away sometimes so dumbfounded. We said, you know what? You can't buy heaven. You, 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 hell's a free ride. You know, you, you can't work for salvation. Here God's offering you the gift of eternal life and you say, no, thank you. Why, why do you do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, why wouldn't they do that? Why? What, what's the difference here? Well, the difference should be this. You're not living by the values they're living by. You're, and you and I are supposed to be living by the control of the Holy Spirit in accordance to the Word of God. Watch. They're over here living by what they see. Well, have you ever seen God? You ever seen him? Bet you've never seen him, have you? And they go on about these things. Look, and what I'm saying is they are with their perception towards God. They're, I can't even tell you how far apart they are from you. It's, it's, it's heaven and hell apart. Now, what, what does this mean? It means exactly what scripture teaches us. The natural man receiveth not the things of God. The natural man doesn't receive the things of God. 
and the Bible says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they're foolishness unto him. Now, how can that be? Because he is drawing, that is the Christian, he is drawing his life from a total different reality of source of truth. While he is drawing his life by what he sees, what he hears, what he feels, what he thinks, and what he smells. There's totally two different individuals here. And as they think, they are going to be. As a man thinketh in his heart, they are going to be. They're going to be. There's going to be a difference there. Now, as we, as we kind of get to understand this a little bit, let, let me try to encourage us here. Um, how, how, how much? I not, you know what? And there's not an answer for this. I've searched for it and I've tried to study it. They won't give us an answer. But how many people do live their lives influenced on a percentage by what they see? I don't know. But I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people live their life by what they see. That's exactly how they live. 70% of the world? 80? I don't know. But I know a lot of people live their lives in accordance to how they see. And what they hear. What they hear. The world really focuses on what they hear today. And, And the world will believe anything. A lot of people, well, we're living in a, um, you know, a, a um, um, synthetic world. So I can say, what kind of fruit is that? Oh, that's easy. That's bananas. And it's a piece of paper. With synthetic scent. It's, it's not even a real thing. It's synthetic. And a lot of people... Will, will, will live their lives by touching, by what they emotionally feel. That's really something gigantic today in our country. A lot of people live by their emotions and their feelings. Now watch this. God says that none of that stuff, none of that stuff can be interfering with my will in your life. Matter of fact, once again, the new birth is just that. It's a new birth. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So here's what I want you to think about when we ask this question. Why Christians need to be spirit controlled? Why Christians need to be controlled by the Holy Ghost? Number one, let me just say on my evaluation of thinking about this, the words of Jesus Christ are far more superior than your personal senses. Now you don't know that. You may not even agree with that. That's not what I'm here to, I'm not here if you do or don't. I'm not interested in that. In the sense of, I am interested, let me back up on it. I am interested in that, but here's what I want you to know. The word of God is far superior in what you see and how you live on that. The word of God is far, what if you're blind? What are you going to say then? You're going to change it to something else? Well, that that can, you go deaf. Well, I'll change it to something else. Well, your taste buds will be gone. Well, that's all right, I'll change it to something else. Then God, I seen the other day was I was in the store, that little girl didn't have two hands. Here, take both hands. Then what are you going to do? And what I'm getting at is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ are far superior than our self-senses. You've got to understand that. Because here's the thing. As you develop your heart on what you think is right, it's going to be what you are tonight. It's going to make you a testimony. Now, as we think about this, Listen carefully to what Paul said. Let me try to give you a little bit of his advice and let's try to put this together. And I'd like you to listen as I quote Romans chapter seven, starting at verse 15. Watch what he says. Paul is talking about two, one Paul, but he's talking about he's got two natures. There's like two, two people and there is. There is the old Saul of Tarsus and then when he got saved, God changed it. Well, God didn't change his name. His, his name was always Paul. Um, Paul, Saul is a Tarsus, a Gentile, more of a Gentile type Greek name. Paul is a Hebrew name. Um, that's all. But the fact of the matter is, here's what he says. Now, carefully listen, because you'll have to catch this. For that which I do, I allow not. Catch out what he's saying. What I'm doing, I don't want to be doing. Listen. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that do I not. 
but what I hate, that I do. You ever been in your life and looked at something and said, I'm going to take you, but I hate you. I hate you. You've ruined me. And you let him in. I hate you. I can't stand you. People on Skid Row today. How'd you get to this place, sir? Well, I was once this and that, and I got involved in this, and I got involved in that. What do you think about that and this? I hate it. What's it done for you? It's took my home from me. It's took my family from me. It's took my welfare from me. It's took my sanity from me. Heck, matter of fact, sir, the only thing I got is these rags I'm wearing. What are you getting ready to do? Well, I'm ashamed to say it, but I'm getting ready to hit him again. I'm getting ready to hit him again. This is, this is a life that is living off the census. And sometimes, watch, we know no other life. We can't blame this person too much. They don't know no other life. It's all they've known is the living life on what you see and what you hear, what you take. They don't know nothing else about this over here. They can't get this habit beat. You can't do this. And so Paul is talking about this old nature that he has in him. He says, for what I do, I allow not. He says, if I make a mistake and it's against Christ, that's not what I want to be doing. That's not my intentions. It never is our intentions, is it? Never is. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. If I then do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. The law is telling me, you're not, this isn't right. The law, the Mosaic law, is telling him if he sins, this is not right. This is wrong. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You see, when a Christian gets saved, the Holy Spirit comes in his life to guide him and direct him. But the Christian is not completely ridden of a sin nature. It's still in the blood. The sin nature still, we're not, we don't believe in uh, uh, sinless perfection once we're saved. I talked about that already. We believe in progressive sanctification. I still have a sin nature in me. And when that sin nature comes out, that's not me doing that. That's my sin in me doing that. Because the new life that I live in Christ Jesus is after God. But the old nature, if I allow it, is not after God. It's just a sin that's in me. And it proves I have a sin nature. Now then is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For watch Now watch what he says. Look, look at the honesty here. For I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, in my seeing, in my hearing, in my smelling, in my tasting, in my touching. That's what that means. For I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. And here's what he says. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. What he's saying is over, over here is this. You know, I'm living this sensual life, and I'm, that's really what it means. I'm living this sensual life, and man, I've learned that this is bad, and I've learned that this is bad, but I tell you, I can't get out of it. You can't. You gotta have a new birth. I can't get out of this thing. And nobody wants to be this honest with herself the day we're living in. No one wants to get this honest about themselves and say, you know what, I can't do this. I can't do it. And because of that, they let their members of the flesh or sensual living exercise pride and keep them from humbling before God and keep them from the grace they need to deliver them from the terrors that torment them. Now, he goes on and he says this, for the good that I would, I do not. Every man living who is not saved, who can see, smell, taste, touch, and hear, he's got a conscience. He knows that's wrong. He knows that's right. He may not fully understand it all, but the power the power to overcome the wrong and to high, uh, fly high the right is awful difficult because the, senses, the sensual life is so limited. The sensual life is so weak. The sensual life is so weak, the world and science is constantly making things to put into the body to try to help the mind to cope with what it can't cope with. Are you following me? Maybe you're not following me on this. But I know what I'm saying is right. And, you know, and there's always that look for liberty. And of course, that liberty is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, 
I'm going to say this again. The words, Jesus said, my words are spirit in their life. You know what? I believe that. I believe that. I believe my seeing is bad. I believe my touching is bad. I believe my emotions is bad. I'm telling you that's with me. It may not be the case with you, but I know that's bad enough where I need to be controlled by the Spirit of God. That's bad enough in my life where I need to be controlled by him on conscience every day. I need to mind myself about what am I being controlled with. Because watch this, watch this. How to, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Look, I, it's easy to tell this thing. This thing's easy to figure out. This thing's easy to figure out. You can't do it by words, but you can do it by a life. Knowing them by the fruit. Well, the eyes. Now watch about the eyes. The Bible says the just shall walk by faith. But we know to walk by sight. It's very natural to us. Daddy's on one side, mommy's on the other. They praise that kid for taking them steps. I understand all that. But that kid gets to use to walking by sight. And that sight starts to really grind into him after the time goes by. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The just shall walk by faith. The eye doesn't want to walk by faith. The eye wants to walk by what it sees. Somebody's going to be controlled here. Let me say, uh, deal with the ears. Look, I don't need to hear all that. Oh, <laughs> yes, you do. Because Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. See, there's a total difference in these things. There's a total difference in this life. And we think about tasting. Well, I, I don't know about all that. Well, the Bible says in the book of Psalms and some other places about the Lord, taste the Lord and see. He's good. Taste the Lord. Not what's in the can or what's in this or what's in that, taste the Lord. Just as a person could say, man, this is good. God's got that same thing going on. But it's, it's totally different. It's totally different. And what about the smelling? Well, you don't think much about smelling. I mean, I don't know. We don't live much by our noses, do we? Well, I mean, I don't. I mean, you know, I don't live much by my noses. But here's what I tell you. Um, some, of, some, of the, some of the natural things uh, in the wildlife, they do. For instance, a white-tailed deer, many of you may know, may probably don't know. A white-tailed deer lives by its nose. That's how they live. When they lay down, they're watching what they can't smell. The wind's on their back and it's blowing right by their nose. A white-tailed deer can take its mouth and open it up and he can taste it. He can taste what's in the air with his tongue almost a mile away. God's made him like that. He's made him like that. I went out in the woods and I've been out there for a, a, a week hunting. I ain't seen a deer one. Yeah. Because they smell you. They're on the far side of the field. You don't even know they're looking at you. They're smelling you. And, and, they, and, and, and that's a sense that they live by. Now, we don't want to live by that. But here's what I will say, what, I'm, what I mean by that. When it talks about smelling, it does give a green light or a red light. You go to somebody's house and they invite you to dinner. And they say, here's your, here's your plate of food and it smells delicious, you're going to be like, oh, wow, thanks. But if they give you a, a tank of food and it smells like a cat litter box, you'll be like, what is this? <laughs> Anybody, what do we got here? Man, it smells bad. <laughs> and you know, you, you go slowly cutting that, cutting that thing up and looking at your wife, you're going to bite it. I don't, I don't know, you're going to bite it? I'm just saying, smelling does give a green light or a red light. But here's what we tell you about smelling. Your nose is a member you don't pay much attention to until you fast for a couple days and start smelling food. Do some fasting for about two or three days, then walk next to McDonald's and let that food blow by you. Watch your heart, watch your flesh. Watch that whole nature start to talk to you about wanting that food. And some of us don't own One way to understand your old nature is to fast. Why well, fast? I don't understand that. You've not went long enough. You need to fast another day. Why well, fast for two days? Not, you need to go on for four or five. And what you'll start to learn is your body will shake and your body will crave and your body will have convulsions because it wants the sugar or the things in your coffee or it wants the things that you're used to eating. Your body's withdrawing from them things. And what about touching? Well, the Bible says, come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. That's what God says. So what I'm saying is this, the words of Jesus Christ are far superior than sensual living. Does that make sense? They're far superior what you can take. Look. This is why the Bible is so much against certain things. And we don't got time to get into that. Let me say number two. As Christians, we have been regenerated in order to be renewed in our mind. This is how God changes the program in us. 
The work of salvation and the work of regeneration has the ability to regenerate us so that we can be renewed. And as we've already talked about in Romans 6, yield your members not as instruments of unrighteousness, but instruments of righteousness. We're regenerated so that we can be renewed and get a fair chance at living for God. And I mean in the sense of understanding his peace, his joy, the contentment, fulfillment with life. Okay, and once again, Paul the Apostle talked about be renewed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that deals with your members, that deals with your hands, your eyes, your nose, your tasting. And remember what we've already talked about? Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. That's what they're used to. That is the natural normal. You neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield your yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments, un, um, instruments of righteousness unto God. As Christians, we have been regenerated in order to be renewed. And let me say lastly, Christians are to be spill, filled with the Spirit of God. Christians are to be filled with the Spirit of God so that they are not controlled by the sensual life. It's, it's an absolute to be filled, not to be controlled over here. It's, it's just that's the way it goes. You can't have one foot in this and one foot over here. The quenching that I've taught you about, I hope you paid attention to that because that's very important. The grieving I've taught you about, I hope you paid attention to that and just didn't let that slide in one and slide out the other. That's very important to what I'm talking about tonight. Christians need to be filled with the Spirit of God as we are told so that we are not controlled by our natural senses. Is it easy to be controlled by your natural senses? Let me tell you this, yes, yes. Is it easy for you and me to be controlled by our natural senses? Yes, it's normal, it's natural to us, but not to the work of grace and the workings of the Holy Spirit of God. The working of grace in the new life is by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Not what we see, not what we touch, not what we taste, not what we hear, on for and more for. A choice needs to be made daily, and that choice needs to be made forever. The Bible makes it very clear that just shall walk by faith. When it talks about, when that statement's making that, here's what he's saying. The just shall walk by faith, not by what you see, not by what you smell, not by what you hear, not by what you taste, and not by what, you know, you sense the sensual life. Although we exercise these senses, we don't get rid of these, but we make them submit and surrender to the will of God to be used as instruments of what? Righteousness under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, not over Him. Make sense? Under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, this hand shouldn't be over Him, under Him. Well, I think it's important to, for the question why Christians need to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. Because if we're not controlled by the Holy Ghost, then there's one other natural way that we're controlled. And we're very familiar with that. But I want to remind myself this and you. There's nothing good there. There is no victory over here. There is no joy over here. There is no fulfillment over here. There is no reward over here. It's over here. And it comes from Jesus saying, look, I got you. I'm going to inspire a word. It's going to meet every need you have, physical and spiritual. I got you. I got you. The words that I speak, they're spirit and they're life. And he's right. He is right. They are spirit and they are life. Father, thank you for the opportunity tonight to be in